Dr. Ruth Goma is a developmental psychologist and a certified life coach accredited by the Life Coaches Association of Nigeria. She practices positive psychology and has carried out extensive researches on behaviors and cognitive processes focused on offering solutions that foster learning and development. She has facilitated, coached, and mentored in several fora. She's an active member of the Nigeria Association of Psychology, International Association of Applied Psychology, International Association of Cross-Cultural Psychology, and the International Association of the Study of Behavioral Development. She's an avid reader, loves art, fragrances, cooking, I'm coming for your cooking one of these days, traveling and exploring new cultures. You are three, 2022, please. Put your hands together online and present here for Dr. Ruth as she takes the stage. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity again. Uh, we are talking about uh, about unveiling, uh, relaunching, and redefining ourselves in the place of adversity. The word adversity itself is not a very friendly word. There's no way you can pronounce adversity and not be stressed yourself. So it's not uh, it's not coming as new to know that everyone goes through one form of adversity or the other. But because we are human beings and we have been built with resilience naturally, and don't take it away from yourself. I want to start really by telling you that no one, no one, do not let anyone tell you how to navigate your process. Do not allow anyone tell you how fast you should go or how slow you should go in going through the process of your life. You are the captain of your life. It is your mind. I'm coming to you as a mind specialist. And I'm going to be asking us in the next few minutes to just try and be flexible with the way we think and the way we approach life. I know we have been sitting down in the last uh, two, three hours. I have been sitting down in the last last two, three hours. So if I can, as a therapist right now, ask everyone there to just get up and shift themselves a little. We have been, we have been so listening and listening. We need to shake ourselves a little. If you would do that in the next uh, one minute, just shake yourself, shake your body a little. Just shake your body a little. Go ahead, just go and do it. Enjoy shaking yourself, twisting your neck. Just taking off tension from your body. Because when you take off tension from your body, you are able to think clearly. As a mind specialist, I know the problems always start from the mind. And so for the next one minute, just shake, shake the tension off your body. I wish I could see the crowd there. I wish I was there in person to see everyone do this. Shake the tension off your body. It's important that you shake the bond of the tension off your body to clear your mind. It is when you're able to clear your mind that you're able to process the situation and process the problem that you need to tackle. Thank you very much, everyone. You may please be seated if you have been standing. And now we'll do some breathing exercises, please. For the next two minutes, I just want you to take a deep breath in. I will count one to three, one to four, when you take a deep breath. And then I'll count one to eight, when you release the breath. Is everyone cooperating with me? Thank you very much as you're doing that. So if you're sitting down, just sit down very, very regularly as I am sitting. And so I want you to take in a deep breath. I'll count one to four, and then I'll ask you to release the breath and count one to eight. So let's go, people. Take a deep breath. One, two, three, four. Now you release it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Let's do that one more time. Deep breath. Take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four. Then release it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you very much. If you have a device on your wrist like I have here, if you would check what your reading was before and after you did this breathing exercise, you will realize that your pulse has dropped. It's important that you monitor your pulse rate every time. Yes, we all want to make money. Yes, we want, all want to uh, overcome adversity, but we have to take care of the body that holds the mind. We have to take care of the body that allows the mind to be clear for you to be able to do what you need to do, especially in the face of adversity. I'll go straight to the benefits of therapy. Therapy will give you access to unbiased assessment. Yes, why do you need therapy in the first place? You need therapy because you admit that you cannot handle the situation that you have been faced with. I'll give you my own scenario. In 2020, when the whole world was shutting down because of the COVID, I, as a therapist, I was badly shaken. I was affected. I was fearful. This is me who would counsel clients and tell them to shake up their fear because I had been conditioned to shake off fear. But the fear of 2020, when the pandemic hit the world, shook me in a way that had never been shaken before. I have lost, I have lost loved ones. I have, I have gone through grief. I have gone through fear. But the fear of the pandemic, knowing that it affected the whole world alike, shook me in a different dimension. So what did I do as a therapist? I reached out to a fellow clinic, one who I could trust to give me unbiased assessment of what I was going through. And he did. It didn't help matters that I had the facts. The fact of the matter was, the whole world was shutting down. I took it very lightly. And I thought, no, in just one, two hours or just two weeks, something will be found about, something will be done about this uh, uh, COVID thing. And we'll be over it and be rid of it. And then I started to understand the statistics and the magnitude of what we were dealing with and the fear setting. Are you in that place now when you are understanding what you're going through and fear is setting in? Reach out to a therapist. Reach out for a therapist that will give you unbiased of yourself because you need to discover that the strength for you to overcome that adversity is right inside of you. And so the fellow would give you an unbiased assessment of yourself. Trust me, you are stronger than you look. You are stronger than you feel. You are stronger than you want to admit. You get new perspective when you reach out to a therapist. Because you are used to doing some things the way you used to do them. But when you reach out to a therapist, you can be sure that you are going to explore new horizons with such fellow. You onboard into a professional. Now, let me digress a little. In the world of therapy, we have the professionals and the unprofessional therapists. Both are very, very important. The unprofessional one are like relatives. You have a problem, you run to them, you have a friend, you sit up over coffee and you share the problem. Yes, a problem shared is half solved. But then you need a professional who have listened to Zeal, who have listened to Dr. Sass, who have listened to Dr. Eric, who's talked about critical 
thinking. That is what a professional will bring to you. We listen to the South African uh, woman that talked about strategic thinking. That is what a professional will give to you. So while in my world of, of practice, I recognize the professional and unprofessional, I would want you to explore both in a holistic manner. The unprofessional are the ones that will continue with you after the professional is done with you. So do not discard them. That is why I recognize them as a professional. I recognize the unprofessional ones because I know they continue the journey with you long after I have stopped. The professional one will discover and uncover for you new things that you are not willing to admit to yourself. We're still listing the benefits of reaching out to a therapist in a world of adversity. Because you need to unveil yourself. You need to redefine yourself. And it's a brilliant thing that uh, Stephanie is working with on this project. It's such, some, it's, such, it's such a thing for us to embrace. I, we do not need to use them as cliches. The word resilience, unveiling, redefining, they, be, they, they, are, they, are, they are long gone beyond cliches. They are, they are tools. They are actually armor. They are things you need to equip yourself with. They are not just uh, terms. They are, they are, they are movements. They are, they are things that you can and personalize to help you walk through the process of going through the adversities of this world. Now, you don't have to, you have to understand, just like most of the speakers have said, you are not alone in this. You are not alone in this because a, a lot of reasons why people do not want to go to a therapist is because of stigmatization. What are people going to think? What are people going to say? Like I first said, your mind is yours. And the sanctity and the safety of your mind is just to preserve. So you must rise above the stigmatization that you think you're going to have just because you're reaching out to a therapist and admitting to the fact that you can't help yourself and you need an external help to get you back on the track. Because that is what has happened. You have gone off the track. You want to get back on the track. And I do not see why we feel we should be, we should be worry over what people think by reaching out to help or reaching out for help for us to get back on track. So forget about stigmatization. Go for the goal. The goal is for you to be able to get back on track. So reach out for help. Reach out for external help and get as much as you can. I know a lot of people say, oh, therapy can be expensive or you can negotiate your way. You can ask, just like Zeal said, what do you, how do you, what is, what do you need? What is that thing that you need? Is it beyond, is it what you want? Or can't pay for? Or is it what you rather pay for and, and gain and move on with your life? Would you rather say, okay, because you can't pay for certain therapy, uh, and then you continue to live in perpetual sinking. Fix whatever you need to fix and move on. People think little of their problems, and so they think, ah, I can solve it myself. And they continue to sink in the mud of uh, trying to save themselves. When all they need to do is speak out, reach out, and they can find help. Back again to affording a therapist. I know in 2020, after I spoke with the therapist that helped me overcome my fear of this, what I was going through with COVID, with the, uh, with the reality of COVID, I joined a group of people who gave coaching for free. Therapy for free, just like Steph is doing today. She has announced that if you need to have session with coaches and therapists, wait behind. But unfortunately for the climb where we belong to, we are in a hurry to run. We are in a hurry to go ahead. We are in a hurry to gallop. We don't deal with the first day things first before we move on to the next one. 
I assure you that the way you do small things is the way you do big things. The way you do one thing is the way you do all things. Habits, habits, my fellow Nigerians, habits, little positive habits will always develop into an enriching, unlimiting access to providing solutions for yourself. Why then do we run away from therapy? Is it a strange word to us? There are different forms of therapy. When you say someone is in, in the garden, feeling their flowers and feeling uh, the therapeutic feelings from, from gardening, we think it's a strange culture and we think it's, it shouldn't be us. But we've forgotten that our parents used to go to the farm and they came back home relieved of some tensions. So if we live in the, in the urban areas where we don't have access to farm, and you have pots around you that you can use to grow plants and care for these plants. I remember some clients, I insisted that they buy pots and start to care for things beyond themselves. And you realize that when you start to care for things beyond yourself, you are on your way to getting yourself out of some adversities. Care for things beyond yourself. Think of others. Volunteer in stuff. I remember the South African speaker saying during the pandemic, she joined a category of people on WhatsApp who, who volunteered and gave out uh, instructions on how to do self-care and the rest of them. We must be our sisters and brothers keepers, helping ourselves to generate energy from within on how to move forward and traverse adversity. I will not take too much of your time anymore because we have spent a lot of time talking about how we can overcome adversity. But one thing I want us to remember at the end of this conference is that to take the theme of this, this conference and do not think of them as just words. I keep repeating that because as soon as Steph shared this uh, dream with me and I just got to know about the UR3 this year, I am just surprised that I have not been, I have not been, a move, I have not been following the movement. But now I assure you that these are not words that you will take, I personally will take lightly. These are words that will become part of me because these are words that we will need to overcome adversities. I'll break now because I know we can have some, we are not going to have some sessions, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with coaches. I am willing to stay on and talk with one or two people if they, if they, if they are willing to talk with me too. And I just want to say thank you to Stephanie and to everyone who was in part of uh, putting this together, knowing that day by day, we are going to be reaching as many people as possible to help them overcome the pro problems that they cannot overcome by themselves. Thank you very much.